Hey guys, welcome to the 41 Week. Today we're going to talk all about DSL, cable internet, and the difference between a modem, a router, and a switch. Now, if you're watching this on another device other than a phone, you probably have internet at your house. And if you have internet, there's two ways you're getting internet from some company. You're either getting it through a company that provides DSL, and if you have DSL, it's coming in over a phone line. This is a very basic phone line connection. It has four wires and it's the same type of plug you would use to plug in a phone. Now, if you're plugging this into um, a modem, which we're going to see in a second, you probably have what's known as a filter. And a filter has one end that plugs into your phone connection and another end, that, or excuse me, one end plugs into the wall and the other end you plug your phone in. And this is just known as a, a basic filter to transfer the data for a specific phone. Another type of filter would specify if it was going to a modem. Now, that is the DSL connection. If you have a cable internet, you're using a basic cable connection that would be the same thing from an older antenna for a TV with an F-type screw connector. There's a copper wire sticking out of the middle with a screw on the end to lock it into place. Now, to connect this to your computer, though, we have to use something known as a modem. And a modem is nothing more than a box, and here's one I have, it's a Motorola cable box. And on the back side of this box, we have a few connections that we're going to talk about. The first is the basic power connection. This can't work unless we give it power. This is the F-type screw connector where we plug in that cable vision wire that we're getting from maybe Cox Communications or Charter or something like that. Over here we have a USB connection. This is used for older computers that don't have this RJ45 connection. These are pretty much outdated. I don't even know why they put them on here anymore. Um, they're very seldomly used. This connection is known as an RJ45 and that's what we're going to plug in a very basic internet cable from our computer to our modem. Now, the problem is this modem can only support one computer. That's why we have just one plug on the end. If we wanted to support multiple computers, we need something known as a router. And the router is going to split the signal for multiple devices. The reason we need the modem in the first place is because this phone line and this cable connection in general are carrying what's known as an analog signal. This modem switches the signal from digital, or excuse me, from analog to digital because our computers need that digital signal to talk. So the next type of modem I'm going to talk about is a modem and router all in one. This is a basic modem and router that's built in all together. This particular uh, modem slash router combo, get this where you can see it a little bit better. We have our same power connection on one end over here. And then moving down, we have a reset switch. And then we have four ports right here in the middle. These four ports are used to plug into four different computers. And this switch or this connection all the way at the end is for our, our phone line, our basic phone line that we would plug in anywhere else. Before we could plug it into a computer, or excuse me, before we could plug in a phone line into this box though, again, we would have to go back and use one of those filters that we've talked about. Now, if you, I don't have a DSL modem. All I have is the modem router combo. So if you have a DSL modem that's similar to this, but might only have the, um, excuse me, only one port instead of the four like this one, that's when you would use something known as a router. And I have a few routers we're gonna talk about. This router takes one connection and splits it into four. So all of the router boxes, the way you can tell them apart is they'll have four Y or four connections that are close together and then one connection that's a little bit off on its own. If you look really closely, this connection that's off on its own, it should either say LAN or WAN. And that stands for local area network or wide area network. And that's connecting to our modem to split our signal into a local air, um, a local network in our house. These other four connections should have the numbers one, two, three, and four just for any devices in your house, computers, um, direct TV boxes, other things like that. It doesn't matter which one you use, they're all four gonna do the same exact thing. Now the problem with this router is again, it only has four ports. What happens if we have more than one or more than four devices? Well, we can get a different type of router which is a, the very same router as that, except on the back of this router, I have eight ports across instead of the four. It just added four on one end. It still has power connection over here. We need power, still has a reset switch. If you ever have had internet troubles and you call the company and they say press the reset switch, that's the switch they're referring to. 
Um, so this one just might have eight connections, which that can come in handy sometimes. But with all the laptops and phones and tablets, we want to go wireless. So we can get a wireless router. And the only difference between this router and the other um, similar router like this that had the four ports, because this one still has the four ports on the back, but it also has antennas. So we know it is a wireless router. Now in future videos, I'm going to talk about how to lock down your wireless and ways to make your network at your house safe. And we're going to go into the settings of these routers. But the problem is we can't go into the settings until you know what the router is. Because if I say you need to reset your router and not your modem, or unplug your router and not your modem, you need to know which one we're talking about. So this is a basic um, wireless router. The problem with this one is these antennas. They don't always get in the way, but now the newer um, wireless routers are just a big flat box and they don't have the antennas. So it's a little confusing to make sure if you have a wireless router or a basic wired router. Now there's another way we can get around all this without having to purchase extra routers. Um, if you need Wi-Fi, you're going to have to have a Wi-Fi router, but they also have something known as a switch. And this is a very basic component that does the same thing as a router, except it's not as um, demanding. You can't do as much robust stuff with this. Now, if you look on the back of this, this does not say LAN or WAN anywhere. All it has is the numbers one through five. But in order to use this, we still have to have a basic router. This switch acts like an extension to this router. So if we have these two uh, devices at our house, let me get to where you can see both. The router that we're looking at right here, it still has that internet port right here. So we would plug this into our modem and then we would get four ports. One of those four ports would plug in from this device to this device and give us four more ports. It doesn't really give us four more in total because we're losing one from this one. So if we had, oops, excuse me, if we had both of these devices, we would be losing one port on this switch and then we will plug it into one port on this switch and that way we would have a total of seven ports. So if we had seven devices and we only had a four port router, we could purchase a switch. Now the reason you might want to do this is let's say you have internet on this side of your house and you need to go to that side of the house with three other devices. You could plug your router in on one side of the house and have three devices plugged in and then run a cable up to the attic or something to the other side of the house where you have a switch and plug in four more devices. Or if you had a network and this is just another way of without having to have a network rack or something in your house but with adding more switches. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is this cable right here and I don't have a router or a modem for this but if you have fiber optic you're gonna have a cable that looks similar to this and this is a fiber optic cable um, it's also used on Xboxes and PlayStations and things for uh, surround sound I know it's hard to see I apologize but if you do have fiber optic you're, that's gonna take the place of your telephone wire or your cable wire but remember we can't plug in a cable wire or a telephone wire into a computer they have to use that RJ5 RJ45 connection but in order to plug it in we still have to have a router or some type of signal that splits it from analog to digital. And again, that's where the modem comes in. So keep a lookout. I'm going to have some more videos coming up about how to lock down your wireless and making your network more a little, a little bit more secure using a software firewall. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email, post them in the comments. Thanks for watching.